Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Daily Destiny number 35. Uh, sorry I missed the last two days. I have been insanely busy, and I have oh, oh so much to talk about right now. It's kind of ridiculous. I don't even know where to begin, but I think the best place to begin is probably actually going to be talking about the uh, Bungie Weekly Update that Bungie put out yesterday. And I'm going to have a separate video going over uh, more well thought out, more well written uh, responses and thoughts on all the all the updates that are coming to the Iron Banner. Um, but I guess the short, well, hmm. the short of it is that they're they're doing Bungie's doing a lot to improve the Iron Banner. And I guess first maybe I should say the reason I I didn't do the last two daily destinies and I missed two days uh, is well, what day is today? <laughs> it's been crazy. Uh, today is Saturday. And on Thursday, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning uh, and drove up to the mountains and climbed a 14er with my buddy Jesse, who I'd been talking about. The one who uh, was I thought was having relationship issues, and I, I didn't know what the hell's problem was, and I didn't know what to tell him. And then basically as soon as we started hiking the 14er, he told me he got engaged. <laughs> So everything that I was gonna like that, that I was thinking about saying and like I don't know trying to console him through it. Oh fuck I forgot I got a new gun since the last time I did one of these. I got the Vision of Confluence full auto scout rifle with um with an element on it, which is pretty kick ass. I got this uh in the raid on normal difficulty after killing Atheon. Um so it's got not one point of ex of uh experience on it. So it's going to be kind of shitty for a bit. Anyway, so we climbed a 14er. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Colorado, we climbed Mount Beerstadt. Um, a 14er, what's a 14er? Uh, a 14er is a 14,000 foot peak. And Colorado has 52 of them, I think. And uh, they're, I mean, if you're from Colorado, you, you, you owe it to yourself to do one of them, right? It's, it's just kind of like one of those things you have to do if you live here. And uh, so I climbed that. It, it was about a five-hour hike, uh, including breaks and stuff like that, which is actually relatively short for a 14er. Beer stat's one of the easiest ones to do. Um, but, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm talking about this stuff. Okay, so first things first, the Bungie Weekly Update. They're making a lot of changes to the Iron Banner. And uh, uh, and there, they all seem to be good changes, but I don't know if it's really enough to keep me super interested in this game long term to be playing this game like in my free time. Uh, I think up until recently, I like every moment, every spare gaming moment I had, I was I was spending with with Destiny. But now it's like yeah, I, I've kind of hit that that cap, and I don't really know where else to go. And, and the new Iron Banner things seem like a they're they're a step in the right direction. I just don't know if it's really enough, but we'll see. Um, they're adding. Uh, okay, so what what are the bullet points that they're adding? Let's see. Um, well, first off, they're changing a lot about how the level advantages work. Uh, apparently, I mean, and that still remains to be seen. But uh, the level advantages are not, you know, the. <laughs> the level advantages, quote unquote advantages from before were insignificant, basically. Completely meaningless. Like a level two person could hang with a level 30 person and that didn't make sense. And now they're, oh, I got the wrong stuff equipped for, uh, no, I don't, anyway. Um, and now it's like, you can't even do Iron Banner Oh, so uh, I'm just going to quote it. Because of this, the next Iron Banner will also require a fire team leader to be level 20 to enter. So you can't even start without being level 20. Which, I mean... <clears throat> you can look at that two ways. You can say, oh, that's cool. Like, you got to be at least level 20 to do it. But at the same time, it's like, well, getting to level 20 is not that hard in the grand scheme of Destiny. And is that just to prevent people from bitching about how level two people can still hang or level four, whatever the lowest level you can do uh, crucible matches is. is. Is that just to prevent people from realizing that they actually didn't do shit in terms of rebalancing it? That That's certainly a possibility. Like if if you if level low level people can't play with high level people, well then of course it's fucking balanced. But is that actually changing the balance of the game or is that just an arbitrary sectioning off? 
but I guess we'll never know. Um, they, they're also improving the rewards. Uh, they're adding... Uh, they're, the, the armor that they're selling was basically worthless before. If you were... If you're trying to get to level 30, it was worthless to buy that armor. Um, because it didn't have enough light on it, or it would never have enough light on it to get you to level 30. Because to get to level 30, you have to have uh, raid gear and, and, a, and an exotic, um, or all raid gear. And uh, the, the new armor that they're going to sell from the Iron Banner for like getting a high enough level is actually going to have enough light to do that, which is really nice, because it makes, like, I think it's going to make a lot people's people's charge to get to level 30 a lot a lot easier. Uh, what else did they change? That is some new guns that are actually good apparently. Uh, they they're fixing the quitting problem where you get like you get a token essentially is what they're calling it that uh or what are they calling it? A medallion and uh, when you lose and then on the next win you get the equivalent of a win for just carrying that medallion. Now, I don't know if that means you can... They, there was kind of... They weren't super clear about, like, how many medallions can you carry? Um, or... Like... Can you uh, exchange... So, what they say is, when you lose, you get a medallion for losing. You don't get the reputation for a loss, you just get this medallion. And on the next time you win, you get you redeem that medallion for the reputation but they, they they don't say how many you can read um you can redeem it once so like if i have five losses in a row and then i win one game do i get five times the reputation or uh how many medallions can you even carry at a time so if i lose five times in a row and then win five times in a row do i then redeem the medallion on every single win or is it all at once, or what? I mean, and, and they didn't even announce the date for the next Iron Banner, which is really fucking strange, too. They're, like, talking about all these new Iron Banner changes, but they haven't... So when, when Destiny first came out, they had that nice little infographic. Uh, whoa, boy. Maybe I should be killing some of these dudes so I can get a little bit more experience on this gun. Um, oh, I haven't even talked to Zur. Fuck, I forgot Zur is here. I want to see what he has. I'm going to do that after this video. Um, maybe he has a scout rifle... Weapon bonus chargey thingy. Um, so yeah, so when 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 Destiny first came out, they had all this info about like, oh, here's here's like a schedule of events for the next month, and basically at this point, we don't know when any next event is going to come. And <laughs> another interesting thing uh, that they talked about in the update is that apparently the well, cool. I'll get to the reforging in a, se in a second, which is actually a really cool option. Um, uh, but the rank was apparently intended to reset for the Iron Banner every single time you do it, which I don't think anybody really knew. They, they said that they did a poor job communicating that like in their post. They, they said, well, we're not good about saying this, but that's how it's going to be. And um, I, I had no idea. I don't think anybody really realized that it was supposed to reset every time. And I don't think anybody, quite frankly, gave a shit whether or not it reset every time because Iron Banner was fucking worthless last time. But that's how it's going to go going forward. Is that Every time there's a new Iron Banner event, uh, you go back to rank zero. So you have to re-earn and re-grind out uh, up to rank three. So if they have, like, I don't know, a new gun available every time, then you, you aren't immediately just rank three. Uh, when it restarts, you have to earn your way back up to rank three. Which, I don't know, it's just one more insane grind for Destiny, <laughs> but what are you going to do? That's kind of how the game is. I mean, it it makes Iron Banner more fun. No, it doesn't make Iron Banner more fun. It makes the rewards for doing Iron Banner uh, more exclusive, I think. So if they have like unique legendary weapons or something like that available through the Iron Banner, then, uh, <clears throat> then they're they're worth getting then they're worth like really fighting it out for i think um then they also have this new feature called reforging and they talked about some features that i didn't even understand were available so <clears throat> i'm just going to read this one because this one's kind of complicated oh i'm going to read this one after i kill this wave i 
guess while I'm killing this whip, I'll talk about the 14er. So I climbed this 14er. <clears throat> Jesse told me he was getting engaged. And I'm, I'm happy for him. Because like, like I was saying when I was talking about this before, I just wanted him to make a decision, right? Like, I didn't particularly like the girl. Uh, and he's always defended her, saying like she's a very different person one-on-one. -on -one. And he fully admitted that she's awkward as fuck in social situations. Um, oh my god, am I going to die here? Why won't that freaking dropship leave? Why is that dropship still lighting me up? And, um, so I'm, I'm happy for him. I really am. Uh, and I'm happy for them. I'm happy for her because I don't know who the fuck else would marry her. And that's, you know, she's one of those girls that's all she really wants in life is to be married, which is kind of pathetic in its own weird way. Um, if your life is defined by who you marry, it's kind of sad. It's really fucking sad, but it's sad how many people, how many girls I know that that's really their goal. Is to lock down some dude. I was like, that's a fucking pathetic ass life goal. God, am I gonna die? Don't die, don't die, don't die. Yes. So we did this 14er. <clears throat> uh, I had to rush home afterwards and basically jump on a plane immediately to get to San Francisco that night. Uh, so I was up at 5 o'clock in the morning. My flight was at like 5.50 that evening. And uh, between all the driving time and everything, like I basically had about 10 minutes to rest after doing this extremely strenuous hike. And when you're at 14,000 feet, if you haven't done something like that, the air is so fucking thin up there, it's ridiculous how exhausted you get from an event like that. Um, you, you just take like three steps and it's tough, right? Because you're on, like, it's it's called scrambling. That's the, not technical term, I guess, but that's the common phrase for uh, for what for what it's called when you when you're when you're doing a really strenuous hike and you're on all fours. You're you're not just on your feet. You're like using your hands to pull you up and really like climb up over a bunch of rocks. And when you're do, when you're scrambling and the in the air is so thin up there, it's just completely exhausting. Um, uh, all right, so I'm gonna read this uh, f reforging thing. <clears throat> Tumor's lash. The hand cannon available on match victory was exciting to us because it was able to re-roll its upgrades on each drop, resulting in some unique and excellent configurations. But due to other issues, this was inaccessible to most, most players. Um, due to other issues, they just leave that, you know, I wish they just had like a little asterisk right there, leading to a long-winded explanation for why, what these other issues were. Like, I want to know what those other issues were. Like, is it because you're... Uh, your weapon drop system in oh did I I'm supposed to go that way I was I figured this was the last mission um is it because your weapon drop system in the crucible is bullshit and the person in the last place has a higher chance of getting items than the person in the first place and because everybody quit no one ever ended up in last place <laughs> Maybe like it, every match ended it as a six on two and so the person on the last place person on the losing team was you know not even in the game long enough to earn loot like I don't know um, all right. Oh, let's kill this guy. All right. Second half. Uh, in the next Iron Banner, Lord Saladin will offer players the option of reforging any Iron Banner weapon, including those from the last event. This will re-roll all the upgrades, but will also reset any progression. So progression, I assume, means the experience you earn by leveling these bad boys up. The cost for each reforge will be a small number of motes of light. So set aside some next time Sir arrives in the tower. So basically what that's what that is saying is, and this is really interesting, like so what the first interesting thing they said there was, where the fuck are all these people on my map? Um is that the bonus properties, so like this gun that I have right here, this this awesome full auto scout rifle with a primary scout rifle with an elemental buff on it. Uh, its bonus properties are it can be full uh, fired in full auto and uh, accuracy improves as you do damage or recoil or something like that. What does it say specifically? Causing damage with this weapon increases stability. Uh, so those two bonus properties, I mean, if this was an iron banner weapon, could be re-rolled. So if you had like a scout rifle that you liked, but the bonus properties were shit, theoretically, 
I guess you could keep re-rolling it until it got to the point where uh, you had full auto or you had the properties that you wanted on it. And that's fucking cool. Why isn't that available for every single gun, period? Like, I want... Like, I've got some exotics, like bad juju. It's garbage. Well, it's garbage right now, but how great would it be if, you know, some... In instead of just dismantling legendaries, like bonus legendaries that I have, why can't I uh, just redo those? I need to figure out where the hell Xur is. All right, let's go to the tower and find out what the fuck Xur is up to these days. I've never found Xur on my own. Now nah, that'll be really boring to watch me find Xur. I'm looking at Reddit. Where is Xur? Xur, Xur, Xur. Search Xur. All right, let's load up the tower and go talk to Zer. See what the fuck he has for sale. Hall of Guardians, to the right of the Vanguard Mentors. Okay, I think he was there before. And he's selling hand cannon telemetries, fusion rifle telemetries, and machine gun telemetries. Oh boy. I have no... Oh, he's selling the Soros regime again. Uh -huh. I wonder how many people buy that now that auto rifles have been just nerfed to shit. Oh, so. Climbed the 14er. Had an awesome time. It was a beautiful day. Uh, I, I, I love doing like physical challenges like that. Physical challenge. Physical challenge. Um, and basically... Oh, what sucked though is the Broncos played on Thursday and I missed that entire game. But it was actually kind of cool. Uh, I had a window seat and I, it was it was crazy like the photos that I was seeing from my friends of the sunset in Denver that night and it was just a, like I was saying it was a beautiful day there and just like the clouds were like this beautiful orange and I should I should post some of the pictures that my friends or steal some of the pictures that my friends are posting and uh <laughs> And just like uh, flying out of Denver on that night, I just realized how much I fucking love this city, how gorgeous it is, how much fun it is, how close I am to like all these other activities I like to do. Like if I was in New York City, where am I going? Uh, I wouldn't, like it's so hard to get out of New York City. Like I loved, I loved being in Brooklyn, but uh, it's just so hard to get out of the city. Whereas in Denver, it, you know, hour and a half drive, I'm at some of the best ski resorts in the world, or I'm close to some uh, some 14ers that are that I just love to do. All right, so let's take a look at the armor. Additional grenade. Crest of Alpha Loopy. Revive teammates faster. Spawn more orbs. Carry more ammo for special weapons. Carry more ammo for hand cannon. That is the worst armor I've ever seen for the hunter. Like by far, that's terrible. Um, Enhanced Axiom Bolts, Spawn with Grenade Energy, Hand Cannon, Special Weapons. Blah. Suros. Uh, yeah. I would have bought this the day before the patch went live that buff, or that nerfed the shit out of auto rifles. Ooh. Exotic, uh, exotic Glove Ingram. I've never bought one of these. Fuck it. Let's see what's up. I need something else to level up. Like I'm at this point where it's like, eh, I don't know what else to do. Except if I, hmm. I mean, if this ends up being like a really good set of gloves, what the fuck am I gonna do with it? Cause I need a new helm as well. Sunbreakers, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh my God. So the Sunbreakers are the gauntlets that Zer sold for like five weeks in a row for the Warlock. How ridiculous. Well, I'll store those in case I ever play a warlock again, which I don't think I will. Oh, I forgot I had these exotic gauntlets already. God damn it. 
Oh, God damn it. What a waste of motes. Well, I guess at least it was just motes of light, not uh, strange coins. I made it store some of this shit. I don't use a lot of it. Pulse rifle, machine gun, auto rifle. And that's good. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so I love Denver. Oh, and I uh, flying out of the city, even though I missed the Broncos game. And God damn it, I was so... I was like... So the last couple of United flights I've taken, they always have on the back of the seats, uh, you know, little personal TVs with, I think it's an $8 option to buy direct TV, live TV during the flight. And the Broncos game was basically starting 15 minutes after takeoff. And uh, <clears throat> this, this flight didn't have it. It just didn't fucking have it. I don't know why, but it just didn't have it. I was so fucking pissed. It didn't have a single TV on the plane, which is crazy because it, it had like newer looking seats, like brand new looking seats and then no, no TVs. And it was the only time I've ever like been completely prepared to, uh, to pay that extra money for the in-flight entertainment. Because like every other time, like who doesn't go on the plane with something to do, right? Like a magazine or a book or a podcast. It's like I, I, I have every flight I go on, I have podcasts ready to go and a book ready to read and music and I'm set. Like every flight is just the same shit. And I, I was like, who the fuck doesn't come prepared for a flight these days? Like who's like, eh, I feel like spending $8 to watch uh, goddamn, <laughs> not, not third rock from the sun, uh, big bang theory uh, reruns. Like who the fuck wants to do that? But with direct TV live, I could watch the Broncos game, but they didn't have it. And it was like even more of a cock tease because uh, I, I had this window seat and out the, I guess it was facing north. Um, and I could see the stadium lit up because it was like right at sunset. And the stadium was just lit up beautifully, beautifully. And it was just like this big candle in the middle of the city. And it looked so cool. And I was so jealous that I didn't get, or so bummed that I didn't get to go. Um, so I think I'm going to want to use my shotgun for a lot of this. This is a big map for Rumble. I don't really remember doing Rumble here very often. Hmm. Well, this middle spot right here is going to be a good place to go. Oh, I've got the wrong grenades equipped. Dang it. Saw that coming. <clears throat> Oh, so anyway, why, why was I flying out to San Francisco? Uh, I was flying out to San Fran to play Far Cry 4. Um, Ubisoft flew me out there and put me up in a hotel for a night, and I got to play a whole bunch of Far Cry 4. Uh, I had about four and a half hours of playtime. Uh, the embargo is up Monday at 8 o'clock Pacific, I believe. So um, that day... Monday at 4 o'clock or whatever time, or 8 o'clock, um, I'll be posting a whole bunch of Far Cry stuff. I mean, I can talk about what I saw, so I had a fucking blast. Uh, if, you, if you liked Far Cry, oh, damn, how did I miss so badly there? Um, if you liked Far Cry 4, or Far Cry, Far Cry 3, you're going to love Far Cry 4. It's not a huge departure. Uh, they've added a couple new things, nothing like wildly new. Um, it's not like the change from nope dang it oh man i missed that little corner on the door i would have killed him there um it's it's not nearly as huge of an upgrade as uh far cry 2 to far cry 3 uh it's it's a whole new world a whole new world. get back here oh god did i just walk in the middle of two people fighting i got a kill though um yeah, I, I love the environment. I love the Nepal setting. Uh, I love... Oh, shit. Whew, that was close. Um, yeah, I, I really love the Nepal setting. I love, like, the kind of mountainous region. Um, oh, fuck, this, this drove me crazy. So, like, uh, as I was getting ready for this event, I, I, like, I watched all the trailers and all the official stuff that was out for Far Cry before 
uh, like going in there just so I kind of knew like you know uh, like watching all the trailers gives me a better idea of like what people might actually want to see more of because like sometimes they'll hint at features and then not show off a lot of stuff in further trailers or you know there'll be one kind of one style of gameplay that they show repeatedly and don't really expand upon like every trailer was basically um oh damn he out shotgun me um Laundry's done. <clears throat> uh, so like every trailer that they put out before was basically riding an elephant and taking a castle. Oh shit. Wow, how did no one take that heavy ammo? Dear Diary. Jackpot. Um, so I spent a lot of my time trying to do stealth stuff. And, oh shit, no, damn you. Fucking asteroid wolf. Uh, so yeah, I like when, when when I was taking castles and stuff, I tried to go like the stealth route. Uh, and but okay, back to my original point, they uh, they had a contest leading up, or like I, I, apparently they announced it at Comic Con. Whoa, oh that had, wow, I don't know what gun that was. Um, where they they gave one Far Cry fan this unbelievable opportunity where they sent him to basically Mount Everest base camp to uh, to to set the Guinness Book of World Records for playing a video game at the highest altitude. So he wasn't summoning Everest, he was just getting to base camp, which is still like an enormously high elevation. Um, and then I found out that the guy, oh shit, the guy who uh, won the contest his entry video, he was from Utah, and his entry video included, oh, what, oh, what killed me there? Was that the van the warlock orb thing? Mm -hmm. um, he was from Utah where he climbed a 13,000 foot peak. And I was watching this before, like, you know, less than 12 hours after climbing a 14 or myself, and I was like, God damn it, how the fuck did I not know about this contest? <laughs> Just like so insanely pissed off that like, I would have fucking won this contest. I would have loved to have gone to, uh, like that, that would have been, the, like I've wanted to climb Everest forever. I, I would love to have gone to Nepal. Like that would have been the greatest fucking contest win of my life. Like I would have applied 15 times for that. I would have climbed like the highest peak in Colorado. And there's 50, so like the highest peak in Utah is 13,000 feet, right? Colorado's adjacent to Utah. There's 50 peaks in Colorado higher than Utah. It, and I, I ran up one. I literally, we, we were jogging up one. Less than four days after completing a marathon. I'm in, good, I'm in plenty good enough shape to at least begin basic training for going up Everest. Uh, so I was like, oh, fuck, you got to be kidding me. Like, there's, I can't believe I missed this opportunity. I would have been perfect for this. And it's not like, and I, I don't think that Ubisoft picked someone at random. I think they picked, um, they, they chose who they wanted to win. And I was like, oh, my God, I would have been fucking perfect for this. I, already, I have a huge YouTube channel. They would have, I want 11 and 10, really? Jeez. Um, I would have loved to have gone. And, and then I talked to the guy who ran the whole contest, who was at this Far Cry 4 event. And he was like, oh yeah, he just got back. He had a great time. We're still publishing the videos. It was this crazy experience. And he was like, and like the guy that they chose, he was like, oh yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good athlete. He had to do a little bit of training to get ready for this. And his, his submission video was just climbing this 13,000 foot peak in Utah. And that was the best entry we had. I was like, fuck, how the fuck did I not hear about this contest? I was so Oh, that that was just like a trip of a lifetime, just uh, just just out of my grasp. That I didn't, that I had it, that I didn't even know existed. That I would have been perfect for. Oh God, I would have loved to have gone to Everest. <sighs> anyway, Far Cry was fun. <laughs> More about that uh, coming soon. Thanks for watching. Game on.